Well, get ready. We're about to see a new round of lockdowns over bird flu, possibly. Is this the disease X that they've been warning us about? 70 people in Colorado are being monitored for bird flu, bird flu even though none of them are showing symptoms. This is funny timing, and I'm going to show you why. Because just in April, a few weeks ago, the World Health Organization Dr. Jeremy Farrar said that bird flu may mutate to spread to human to human contact and that mortality rate is extremely high in bird flu. Now, before we get to what he's saying, I would like to remind you who we're dealing with when we listen to Dr. Jeremy Farrar, he's a fraudster that changed the outcome of the nature paper that told us that COVID did not come from a lab. So rewind the clock a little. It's 2020, you are not allowed to say that COVID leaked from a lab. We're told that that's racist. People are canceled from Twitter. The media tells you that that's a, an extremist Trumpism to say that COVID came from a lab. They published this paper for, in Nature Medicine. This was used by the government and the media to shut down all speculation that COVID may have come from a lab. Now, a couple years later, the Senate investigated this paper and they showed an email, this email, in fact, from Dr. Jeremy Farrar looking over the paper. Yes, that one. And saying, oh, can I just micromanage a little bit? But can you change one sentence, which is basically the conclusion of the paper from it is unlikely that COVID came from a lab to it is improbable. That's what he wanted changed, even though he's not one of the paper's authors. He's just changing the conclusion because he wants that that's what that guy did that means he's a liar and a fraud he helped fake an academic paper to tell us that covid didn't come from a lab because we all know that covid most likely came from a lab we can say that now right that's how science works you can just change papers like that that's not yeah, how science works it's not oh okay and it's not even like it's not even like a clarification. Those are two totally different words: unlikely and improbable. Unlikely yes. means well, probably you know, it's, it's not likely, but it's, it's it's possible to happen. Improbable means like it could. It's like a one in a billion chance. Yeah, exactly. Can we just put it's that like, back up so we can you think all of, look at his suggested edits because it's unethical. While we rail about this, keep railing, please. I'll rail. Well, just think unlikely versus improbable. Like if if you tell me it's unlikely that that bridge is going to collapse while I drove drive over it, I'm not going to drive over it. If you tell me it's improbable, I'll probably drive over it. You know, like okay. there's a chance that it, there's there's a one in a billion chance that that bridge is going to collapse. I'm just not. I'm I'm going to drive over. You it. cannot change scientific conclusions because you want them to be changed. Oh. You can't do that. Can't do that. Okay. You, you cannot do that. This same screen pissed off Philip last time, and I'm glad it pissed off Philip this time again because. <laughs> well, it I mean, makes it was, me it's feel highly. My secret is I'm just. I'm always pissed off, but this okay. pisses me off just slightly more. <laughs> it would be highly improbable for him not to be pissed off again. You're right. Or unlikely. It's it's Im it's probable that this will continue mm -hmm. to piss him off because he's a science purist. That's why uh, Philip has a science background. So, okay, Jeremy Farrar, he's a liar and he's a fraudster. He never suffered any consequences for this, though. In 2022, he was appointed to the chief scientist uh, uh, at the World Health Organization, the WHO. So that's who we're dealing with when we're told that bird flu might actually mutate and be more dangerous. So given how much that we trust him about as far as we can throw him, let's watch what he has to say. That virus now evolves and develops the ability to infect humans and then critically the ability to go from human to human transmission. And we know that in the rare cases, uh, I think off the top of my head, four or five hundred cases so far of humans, the mortality rate is extraordinarily high. Uh, so to me, this is a major concern. The current out, uh, outbreak, for want of a better word, in America amongst cows is really concerning as well and also talks to this issue of, of transmission. We have to understand in those cow uh, settings, uh, sheds, how H5M1 is transmitting because because it may be learning, not learning, evolving into transmitting in different ways. This, this is a huge concern and I think we have to watch more than watch. We have to make sure that if H5M1 one did come across to humans with human human transmission that we were in a position to immediately respond with access equitably to vaccines therapeutics and diagnostics okay so right now we know that it's very rare for bird flu to spread human to human but he's saying it's probable 
that that could happen. Now, given he doesn't know the definition of those words, he thinks it's interchangeable with likely. Okay, how are we well, going mean, to respond? That's the thing. The likely and probable are kind of interchangeable. They both mean the same thing, but unlikely and improbable do not. Okay. Because, yes. Like, unlike, don't, do you, I mean, do you agree or no? Yeah, I'm taking liberties the, to say that he he doesn't gotcha, know the gotcha, negative gotcha. version. <laughs> You're <Yeah>. right. <laughs> so, sorry. Okay. Yes, but given the fact that he plays fast and loose with scientific conclusions, and we know right now that bird flu does not transmit easily from human to human, what are we going to do with that? He says vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics, and control of cows, he says, which is so funny. Oh, you want to control that... cows, kill meat, uh, so we can't eat meat anymore? Yeah. Oh, well, hang on. I'm going to show it to you in writing. This is not my conjecture, right? Sounds like, oh, here she goes again about the globalists. Well, they wrote it down. I'm not making it up. Uh, in April, we got the updated WHO pandemic treaty that they want all member states to sign in order to hand over power for them to control the possibility of the next pandemic and when it comes. Okay, the first part there says they want to promote one health for pandemic pre prevention. And that includes recognizing the interconnection between people's animals and the environment. Uh, OK, so they go on to say that they need regular reviews of each country's farming practices. Basically, we need to come in there regularly and see what we can do, because if we don't like your industry and how you're eating or producing milk or what have you, we're going to do something about it. So everybody's farming is everybody's business now. So your nation's sovereignty out the window. Uh, one of the things they also want to control is every indoor space. Now this one's new because just last week, the WHO released updated language to describe airborne pathogens in a bid to increase international cooperation in the event of a new and expected global pandemic, they say. So during the pandemic, they said COVID spreads through droplets and people freaked out and said, oh, but it's in the air too. And now their official word is, you're right, it can be in the air as well. And so it can be transmitted. And that's what is happening possibly in Colorado. This is from the United Nations report on bird flu. And this quote here is, in fact, from our friend, Dr. Farrar saying, Mil do the milking structures of cows create aerosol? It's in the environment which we're living. It's in the transport system that's spreading around the country. This is a huge concern. And we have to make sure that if H5N1 did come across human to human transmission, we're in a position to immediately respond with equitable vaccines, therapeutics and diagnostics. We just saw him say that. So guess what though? Okay, now we're supposed to be worried, not just human to human. So we masked, we we kept six, six feet away, that kind of thing. But now just what is in the air? Is it in the air around you that you are sitting right now surrounded by bird flu and you didn't even know it? Well, here's how much they, and uh, okay, yes, viruses are not new to our world, right? We have always been surrounded by them in all manner of ways. But now that they're saying it can be an and in the air anywhere you could literally be like what's that movie where the guy's stranded with a tiger on a boat like you could still have airborne pathogens life, of pie. life of pie life of pie yeah so like literally it's going to be everywhere but they especially want you to be afraid of indoor spaces but they have a solution meet area this is a WHO CERN Labs tool that launched last week that will calculate the risk of disease spread in all indoor spaces it will give you a risk percentage based on everything about your space. Now watch them explain it. Again, this is not my conjecture, they're doing it. And then ask yourself, do you want to give this information to the WHO and allow them to assess everything you do with a risk factor? Okay, so what they're saying is uh, that they're, they have this tool. You can put in the space of your office space 
and they will give you a risk percentage. So here it's saying, oh, this space is great. It's 8.8% .8 risk factor that you're gonna be transmitting COVID in the air. This one is specifically used for COVID, but you can see that they're gonna, you know, keep it, I guess, running for any disease that they want. So this lady opens the window and, oh, look, your risk factor just went from eight to four. But then it shows you people having person-to-person -person conversations in just a second. And that number, see, look, oh, no, it went all the way up to 16 because yeah, you're talking to somebody in person. But yeah, now watch when... talking to her in front of a window. Right. They're both basically dead. But now they just put masks on. So it says, oh, now your risk factor is 1.8, which is bullshit. We know about masking and COVID transmission, but okay. And now that guy across the way put on a mask and the number went even further down. So you see what this is telling you, that it makes me think that one, masks are coming back because they think that it will help prevent transmission of things inside. Uh, and it tells me that in-person work is about to be attacked again uh it tells me that this is interesting timing with an election coming coming don't you think yeah i mean let's talk about that right so the big concern right now the the talk the the rumors the scuttlebutt around washington of, over the past few weeks is that we are not going to have a democratic national convention that well there are going to be too many protests if that's not the case then there's threat of airborne illness right now we don't know we don't want to have that many people together it would be irresponsible of us Democrats to have so many people in one room. And we also don't want to, you know, hurt the, the, the health of the president, President Biden. So this will be a sort of cloistered Democratic National Convention like we saw in 2020. He won't have to go. We'll keep him under lock and key. Yeah. We'll, we'll feed him a bunch of medicine. He'll he do, can read from a teleprompter. He can read from a teleprompter. I mean, of course, they do that at the DNC anyway, but the things. But anyway. But and debates also, can be fed from a prompter. True, uh, uh, but, but bigger, more importantly than all of that, though, is mail-in voting, yes, right? It's mail-in sure. ballots, right? That's the real thing here. So stay home, people. They want you to stay home. The air out there is going to kill you. You know, just stay in your house because there could be a flock of uh, deadly birds flying around. Mm -hmm. Or the, the cows are now aerosol spraying all of us. Right. And they need to be culled and you need to stay inside with masks on and not leave the house. Yeah. I mean, this is a, this is a World Economic wanna... Forum wet dream. I didn't want to wrap back around. I was going to wrap back around at the end, but I'll do it now because he just brought it back up. But how the hell are they milking these cows that are rendering the milk <laughs> <Right>. airborne? Like, <laughs> With spray I, I bottles? I know. Like that. When they said aerosol <laughs> spray, I'm like, what are they shooting? Like a mist? Like <laughs> like a misting cows? Like what the hell's happening over there? I don't know. Uh, Dylan Wings in the chat says, this is so transparent because it's not something that I am just connecting the dots. They wrote it out for you. These, this is, We're just watching what they do and trying to keep track because and, you're and right. The, it's absolutely transparent. And the World Economic Forum has told us, I mean, we're going to talk tomorrow about cash and on the show and, and, and working on a segment now about, uh, about all that. But the World Economic Forum has publicly stated like COVID was really like a trial run for this. And it did really, really great things for them to advance their agenda. They've said this publicly. Like, this is not a tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. This is what they've said. It's in their documents. They've confirmed this. And we all knew that that was a trial run. It was not as strong as they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so can they find something that will kill one in four Americans, as they say? Okay. One in four people. But let's say what we can say now about bird flu so that we can at least have it on record, because okay. I'm afraid that we won't be able to say this later. Number one. Bird flu is typically not transmitted from person to person. It's very rare. Uh, there are many strains of bird flu that have very low mortality rates. And then there are some that have higher mortality rates. We have no idea what we're dealing with right now. Um, also, our individual health and strength, our comorbidities, mobilities, excuse me, your weight, your pre-existing health conditions, uh, all of these things, absolutely are a factor in how you may deal with it if you are exposed. So natural immunity and natural health and strength is a factor. We couldn't say those things during the pandemic when COVID was uh, being weaponized. So I want to say them now because I am afraid that I won't be able to say them uh, in short order because of the writing on the wall. And yes, as more and more countries then adopt the World Economic, For uh, the World Health Organization Treaty, the Pandemic Treaty, we got word today, um, Anne Merrill Klosterman, who's a friend of the show, she wrote today that uh, against the express wish of the majority in the House, the, the 
The demissionary cabinet will agree to a large international pandemic treaty of the World Health Organization of the United Nations in the Netherlands. So this is coming to the Netherlands. They're agreeing to this, even though the people don't want it. Like these things are going to be rolled out in force now. Well, Dr. Kat Lindley said on this show just a few weeks ago when the new treaty was rolled out that if some countries tank it, they may tank it on behalf of all of us. Because in the United States, our leaders are not doing anything to stop it. Uh, in the UK, there is some movement but it doesn't seem like they're actually going to not sign it. So most Western countries are doing balls about it. They're just going to go and sign, right? But there are countries like Japan, New Zealand, Australia, uh, Brazil. I don't have them all in my notes. That may just tank it for the rest of us, and then we will all owe them a solid. I hope so. Let's see. Let's hope so. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.